All right, guys, we are uh, back working on the Aristo at Linden Shop. Linden uh, wanted me to come down and hang out and insisted I do this here. So the Aristo has been having some issues. The alternator decided to stop charging, not completely, but it's been a little bit worse. Every day I drove it, um, put some clips in of when it was happening while I was driving right here. All right, guys, I was just headed home and got a little issue. So you can see that battery display down there is reading 11 and a half or so volts. I think, uh, I think it's gonna be alternator time for the Aristo. Yeah, not looking too good here. We're hovering around 11 volts at idle. I think it's time. So let's go talk about what we're actually going to do. Oh, there's one back there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> there's some really great things. The intake's already out because of the HD clamps. All the charge pipes are on HD clamps. However, we have to get our arm all the way back in here, which I think I can do. I don't think you have to take this off. There's one down in there. Yeah, I realize that. So, we got to get that charge pipe right here out so we can get to the alternator. And then, we're putting a Sequoia alternator on this thing. It's higher amperage, and it's pretty... It fits pretty good out of the box. It's not perfect, but we're going to show you how to do this thing. All right. Definitely not as bad as I thought. These HD clamps are the jam. Now, getting the one back on in there might be a little issue. I think Lyndon's gonna be working the top. I'll be working the bottom. Uh, we now have to get the belt off, which is much tighter thanks to this fatty Koyo Rad. <laughs> so, yeah, belt's next. All right, Lyndon, what do you think? <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> yeah, so you guys can see here um, the actual the bolt the pattern same. is the same. The issue comes down to thickness, that which versus that. this guy versus this guy. Um, you can really see the difference there. Um, we'll measure it and I will add some stuff in right here of how much we took off. So this is a Denso. The other part that you have to deal with is you can see the plug itself is different. It's a four wire on this. Now you still only use three and Powerhouse and a few people actually make a conversion from your oval to the four pin because this is a pretty standard deal. But the other part is if you feel comfortable, this connector and that connector are the same family and use the same pins. So what's that mean? Depin it, repin it. What I'm gonna do is add a link to the Haltech Jay-Z terminated harness, and I'm gonna link you to the quick start guide. I might even also, I'll put a link in the description below so that you guys can pull it up, but I'm gonna put the picture of the page for the quick start guide right here. And that will show you, I will circle everything and make arrows and everything like that. So just pay attention, pause the video. Um, that way you can depin, repin, and you're good to go. So we're gonna start working on figuring out how much of this needs to change and go from there. All right, Lyndon. 8.5. Eight and a half millimeters. So you'll see on here, and then we've scribed a line right there you guys can see it right there so that is what has to go away about eight and a half millimeters some people have said five but it's looking like they were wrong they were wrong <laughs> which is <laughs> fine <laughs> so basically what we're going to do and the good the other part that's really important about this is you have to get this right or you're going to throw belts all the time yeah Needs so to be square, it needs to be flat. Yeah, so you got to get this thing right. You can use a grinder. Not the best idea. <laughs> um, Linden, thankfully, has his mill set up now. So we are actually going to use the mill to basically just cut that off and take it down to where we need it to be. 
Now, if you guys do take off too much, you can buy shims that are very, very thin, and you can actually shim it in and out so that you aren't gonna break the ear off the block or break the ear off the alternator, more than likely the block. So be smart, take your time on this. It's very important. Lyndon, what the heck do you have going on here, man? <laughs> you got you got riser blocks and you got clampy boys. <laughs> So, Lyndon insisted we do it right. We're using the mill that he just fired up. You can hear the, uh, I guess it's the pump for the oil, coolant. Oil pump. Yeah. So, this thing, we are going to use this four flute mill to mill this nice and flat and take off the right amount. Uh, Lyndon is going to use this fantastic floppy drive startup. <laughs> Um, CNC side it's of this thing, <laughs> but I don't know if you guys are even slightly into cool tools, but buddy, this shop is absolutely loaded with it. So we'll watch him work. I would normally do this, but he said he wanted to do it and he wanted to do it right. So he insisted. So we're going to do it. Whatever. Let him do it at least. Do the right spray? <laughs> <laughs> We're not even going to go into that, London. Which way are we throwing chips? Are we throwing at you or me? I can't remember. I guess we'll find out. Okay. Lyndon's got his safety squints on. So you all have, might have actually noticed that there was an extra ear on that alternator. Um, some people don't take it off. It doesn't actually interfere with anything. I think we are going to just for ease of installation. So yeah, um, after you're done with all this, just blast it out with some brake clean, clean it all up, uh, do your best to get everything out of it. it the rest of it will come out. Um, being that it's aluminum, non-ferrous, non-magnetic, it shouldn't interfere with any of the windings and everything. Obviously. Keeping as much out as you can in the process is, is obviously ideal. So hopefully this thing goes back in quickly and easily. All right, guys, so this is the connector. This is what's on your car, uh, more than likely. So this little lock right here, let me get a little bit further away. This little lock right here goes down to the bottom of here, and then you're going to use a small pick like this guy and you'll be able to go in from the bottom here and there's a little release and then you just pull the pins out of the back they are in fact the same connectors or pins they are the same pins so all right guys so my suggestion is to depin one at a time match each pin to each pin um i'm gonna just call it out here so you are looking at pin one on your original needs to go to pin four on the Tundra Sequoia alternator. Pin two needs to go to pin two. And then pin three needs to go to pin four. Uh, you will not use pin three on their new connector. And my little rubber boot uh, that is on my factory harness actually slipped right over the new connector perfectly. So it'll be semi-weather sealed, still work out really well. 
I'm going to throw this alternator back in, and hopefully our calculations were right. And then we just got to put it back together. No big deal. All right, just to warn you guys, I just noticed the, uh, the main stud on the alternator, instead of it being an M8, it is an M6. So before you start all of this, hopefully you're not in the middle of it, go get you an M6 flanged nut. Um, that is, or, or you can, I guess you can use a washer as well, like a fender washer or something like that. But if you can get a, a nut that has a flange built onto it, you don't have to worry about ejecting the washer and never being able to find it. So that's the only thing I've noticed so far. I'm going to get the belt back on and then start putting this thing back together and then fire this thing up. Hopefully we are back up to 14 volts or just shy of. Fingers crossed. That is what we want to see right there. 13.8 sitting at idle. This car is going to be so much happier. Already sounds happier. I bet there's less stumble in the morning. Belt's running nice and true. Sweet little Garrett down in there. Lyndon, what was the worst part about that? Uh, Probably milling down the alternator. Yeah, I mean... Really setting up the mill. It was really pretty easy. Yeah, so guys, don't be intimidated by this. It's really not that big of a deal. Again, you can back your way in and just keep checking because the bottom swings up, so you can tighten it up pretty tight. Yeah. Keep swinging it up, keep swinging it up. As long as it doesn't touch or like it doesn't just run into it, it's not super out of alignment. The bottom bolt is what is going to be dictating belt alignment. So just get the top to where you can bolt it down, even if you end up going a little bit further than you need to, and add a shim, okay? Um, just make sure it's straight. Just back your way in, take your time, and this is not a hard mod. This thing's straight to 13.8. I don't know that this car has ever had 13.8. It's always been kind of all over the place. So. This thing is pretty much happy, ready to go. That is Sequoia alternator onto your 2JZ. Uh, this just happens to be in a first gen Aristo. So I hope this was helpful. Lyndon, thank you for uh, hanging out with me and, and helping me with this thing. Um, Lyndon is gonna, we're gonna do a shop tour of Lyndon's shop, I think at some point, um, if he wants to, we'll see. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, well, I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll see you guys soon. More Aristo content, maybe new exhaust. We don't really know. Uh, there's some new, new vibrant titanium mufflers that I'm kind of drooling over. And I, honestly, this thing could be a little bit louder. So probably what we're going to have to do is go out on the on, uh, you know, somewhere closed off so that we're not in traffic, but do some pulls and get some exhaust clips so you guys can actually hear this thing, you know, wide open. We still need to tune the thing get the boost control stuff hooked up, but hey, we can drive it again. It's charging. We're good. See you guys soon. Bye.